Liebe Freunde, es ist Dear friends, it's always the case that when we're talking about a historical day, such as looking back to the First World War, with a distance of a hundred years, we want warmth because the world today is often a cold world and a very hard world. So I would like to take you along another uh, story. Why? the European Union did not see its existence come into force uh, before the First or Second World War. And it's a simple answer. Before the First World War, the nation states wanted to unify Europe in hegemony under German power, French power or Russian power, for example, before the Second World War, it was the same thing. It took the defeat of Nazi Germany. It took the defeat of the large colonial powers such as France and the UK for the European Union finally to be created with the reality that there should no longer be a hegemonic state in Europe. That was the precondition for the creation of Europe as we know it today. The state nationalism isn't just war, nationalism is also selfishness, hegemonism, egocentricity. And if we have a political crisis today, perhaps in Europe, that may be because there are hegemonic tendencies in Europe today to the effect that the truth can only be found in one country. I tell you, if we go on like that, we will destroy what we have built up. There is no single truth. There is no single ideology. If we do not understand this, we will never manage to build Europe. Colleagues, I know we talk about nationalists, Eurosceptics and so on, but what bothers me is the fact that the Europeans are scared to fight. They feel unarmed in the face of the right wing and left wing Euro centric uh, Eurosceptic ideologies. Right, read Camus, I say. Be incisive. Be happy. Try and uh, raise the European tide to build Europe. It's difficult, but it is a future which will be better for our children. Be not afraid. Tackle the extreme right and the extreme left when they talk about Europe. Go for it. Everyone says today that there's all this business of Europe and the war, but that's over. Now, I've had hundreds of debates in schools, and in schools I always tell them one very <coughs> simple story. I was born in 1945, on the 4th of April, conceived by my parents, it was really the first opportunity for them literally to conceive after the Allied landings in uh, Normandy. Now, on the 4th of April, I'm born. When I start speaking, I say to my parents, in 50 years, there will no longer be a border between Germany and France. The Rhine will no longer be a border, but a shared river. If I'd have said that, my parents would have said, we've got a problem here. He's talking too early, and he's talking nonsense. That's what uh, the European story is. That's my story. Now, if people say, what have we achieved? Well, you've all said we've achieved what seemed impossible. The fact that the First World War and the Second World War are no longer possible in Europe. Inshallah, inshallah. 
we should get up every morning and say thank you thank you to all uh, Helmut, Helmut Kohl uh, the European Greens if you like who managed to build Europe like that and that's why I think when we talk about Europe's future let's have a vision here let's stop talking about uh, the need to compromise here there and everywhere I know that you have to compromise in the European Parliament but I'm in favor of the United States of Europe I really think that a federal Europe is the future uh, for social good it's the future for a Europe in which all citizens will have a decent social situation able to live in peace and in order to live in peace we'll only achieve that in a vision of Europe that moves towards a federal Europe now you'll say uh, it, that's difficult to achieve well I'm a sovereignist national sovereignty has been swept away by globalization national sovereignty no longer exists what is sovereignty sovereignty is peoples being able to decide freely and democratically on the way in which they live in their projects for their own civilization and the way we live and our civilization in today's world of globalization can no longer be defended nationally if we don't if we fall back onto the nation we will be beaten and we will be swept away as was national sovereignty swept away by globalization so that's what we have to say to these people selling us these uh, pipe dreams of a return to nationalism you know what will happen in 30 years N no uh, member state of the EU uh, will belong to the G8 anymore not even Germany not even Germany the Germans need to think about that the G8 will be Russia India China Mexico Asian countries a whole number of countries Brazil China but not us unless there's a federal Europe a federal Europe is the opposite of a centralized Europe the French need to understand that the centralized model of the French Republic is a model which no longer works in the modern world that's why federalism is the future it's modernity it's not even that difficult to understand and that's why colleagues uh, for those of you who will be in the next parliament I wish that you will have a greater feeling for the common European interest don't fight to defend national interests as has been the case when for example we discussed the cars directive there is no common interests which can be reduced to national interests the future of the German car industry isn't the same as the common European interest and the same for the French car industry I think this point needs to be understood ha have we ever understood that well Hannes Svoboda talked about it Sarajevo and Bosnia when the Bosnians began to be massacred France the UK were traditionally pro-Serbian Germany was after the Second World War traditionally pro-Croatian and what about the Bosnian Muslims they had no uh, advocates Muslims without oil uh, at, at the beginning they were allowed to fall we allowed them to be slaughtered we allowed concentration camps one hour's flight from Paris Frankfurt Berlin and goodness knows where else when we finally understood that Europe's common interest wasn't simply the sum total of the policies of France Germany and the UK then we were successful in achieving intervention and that's why I say to you that Europe's common interest in Ukraine is not the interest of uh, German big business and industry I think it's unbelievable that the president of Siemens went to see Putin and told him that Siemens 
and Russia's Putin had a community of values of 160 years. So Hitler, Stalin, a community of common values. I think, of course, uh, we're not talking war in Ukraine, but if we allow Ukrainians to fall, tomorrow we'll be allowing other peoples to fall. And therefore Europe must say, Ukraine is fighting for freedom, for Europe's freedom, and we are prepared to defend them through all means except military means. Otherwise, there would be no point building Europe. Thank you.